Hello everyone, welcome to today's video, which focuses on the IOXC 17.10 Dublin release for the Catalyst 9000 series switches. This is the first of our new IOXC preview videos that we'll be doing. My name is Amma Wusa Hammond and I'm a TME within the Catalyst 9000 switching team. This release is positioned to bring in enhanced features that will be unique to Cisco and will serve as the key differentiators against competitors. It will also provide additional software feature parity for the new Silicon One hardware platforms to drive mid-cycle refresh. It is a standard maintenance release and has a support lifetime of 12 months. We'll start off with the new software features within the following sections. First, the platform or infrastructure, then security, then fabric solutions, and then finally end with programmability. First, 17.10 introduces an industry first of 50 gig speeds, which is also the first time in campus, on the Silicon One core platforms, namely the Catalyst 9600X Sub2 and the Catalyst 9500X with the align cards. And this provides a seamless migration path from the 10 and 25 gig speeds that have been supported. This release also introduces 1 gig speed support on the Gen 2 Catalyst 9600 line cards when they are deployed with the Catalyst 9600 Sup1. Prior to 17.10, the switch architecture did not support LLTP packets to be exchanged on the interface with the protocol down. However, from 17.10, the devices can now be the, the device or the switch can now be configured in the independence mode for layer 3 port channel with this feature. And this makes the protocol to stay up while the interface remains unbundled, allowing the LLDP packets exchange for device discovery and also pushing off the configuration using PMP or ZTP. Previously, the switch allowed only a one-to-one -one IP to MAC address mapping of end devices. With this release, the limits of IP addresses mapped to a single MAC address has been raised to 1000 to allow for many connections of virtualization setups, IoT devices, and firewall integration with SDA fabric. So with the transition to IP version 6, almost all modern IP devices are IP version 6 capable, but still, many older devices are IP version 4 only. We need a way to connect these devices and provide a seamless IPv4 and IPv6 coexistence. Starting in 17.10, the stateful NAT64 feature provides a translation mechanism that translates the IPv6 packets into IPv4 packets and vice versa. The stateful nature ensures that states are maintained and a single IP address is used for all the private users with the use of different port numbers. This release, you can also enable NAT on layer 3 multi chassis ether channel using the interface port channel command, and this provides resiliency on our switches. Support for Stackwise Virtual is brought to parity on the Silicon One platforms, namely the Catalyst 9500X and the Catalyst 9600X Sub2. There have been some enhancements made as well, where the dynamic addition and removal of SVL links or DAD links are supported, and therefore a reload is not required for adding or removing the SVL links and DAD links when the device is already operating in SVL mode. In 17.10, we are introducing PTP support in Stackwise virtual environments. This gives the customers end-to-end -end flexibility by bringing their time-sensitive applications onto the Ethernet networks. To continue to innovate in our, in our app hosting capability, starting from 17.10, ER spawn on app gig port on the Catalyst 9300 and the Catalyst 9400 is now supported. This allows for the mirroring of the data traffic from the device to the application that runs on top of the app gig port using the IOX capabilities. In this release, we are also bringing Bonjour support to parity with our Silicon One Q200 platforms, namely the Catalyst 9500X and the Catalyst 9600X. We'll now move into our new security features. The traditional approach to network security using ACLs provides a stateless form of filtering, where traffic needs to be allowed or denied on different interfaces before entering or leaving the network. A full and ongoing understanding of all inbound and outbound flow combinations is required, and this easily utilizes a lot of TCAM memory space. 
Starting from 1710, reflexive ACLs are now supported on the Catalyst 9000 series switches, providing a form of stateful filtering for the enterprise. It can be used to permit return IP traffic for sessions that are originating from inside the network, but deny IP traffic for sessions that are originating from the outside network. With 1710, MaxTech frames can now be transparently forwarded via the intermediate Catalyst 9000 switches, which enables establishing a MaxTech session between third-party devices. It also allows the establishment of point-to-point -point MaxTech sessions between the Catalyst 9000 switches itself. 1710 also introduces support for MaxTech fallback key with high availability. This mechanism helps to re-establish MKA sessions when it fails to establish a MaxSec session due to pre-shared key mismatch in highly available architectures. Starting from 1710, we are now supporting IPsec capability on our Catalyst 9300 platform using a VPN hosted application called CodyLime, which also provides an interactive web UI for configuration and management purposes. This is also supported on the Catalyst 9300X in addition to its own native IPsec support. Minimal resources are required, including one CPU core, less than one gigabit of memory, and to add a 200 to 500M throughput of expected app performance. Customers use the Radius Automator Tester feature to verify that the AAA servers are responding to test packets sent by the network access server. Prior to 1710, when the Radius Automate Tester was configured, after the switch was reloaded or rebooted, the server was always assumed to be up, and if that wasn't the case, several dead intervals had to pass before the server was detected as down, and this caused a longer convergence time for our customers. However, in 1710, with some enhancements that have been made to the Automate Tester for Radio Server, after the switch is reloaded or rebooted, the server is now presumed to be down, and a 4 second timer is started before the first tester hello message. If the radio server responds, the status is transitioned to up. This allows now for a faster convergence and a better detection of a down radio server than before for our customers. It is a major concern for major financial sectors to provide a customer-friendly method to ensure that data is sufficiently erased to hinder the data recovery attempts. To ensure the secure wipe of all data on the Catalyst 9000 series switches, we have introduced the Secure Data Wipe feature in 1710, an industry first, which performs data sanitization and securely resets the Catalyst 9000 switches, following the guidelines for media sanitization that, had, that are described in the NISD SB 888 Rev. 1. In 1710, the HCP Snoop Glean feature is now enabled on our Catalyst 9000 series switches. This feature provides a read-only DHCP snooping option on our switches. For our customers who do not want to enable DHCP snooping but still want to be able to differentiate an untrusted port device that is connected to an end user from a trusted port connected to a DHCP server. Security group access list allows control of our operations, control of operations that users can perform based on their security group assignments and policies that are assigned to their groups. The SGACL login, when enabled, allows the device to log source group tag and destination group tag, SGACL policy names, packet protocol type, and action performed on the packets. The monitoring capability of the SGACL allows an administrator to test security policies without enforcing them to make sure that the SGACL policies function as intended and have visibility into the outcome of the policy actions before enforcement. The monitor mode and the SGACL login will now be supported on the Catalyst 9600X2 and the Catalyst 9500X. Now, let's move on to the fabric solutions. Within this section, with 1710, support has now been added to the Silicon One 9500X and the 9600X platforms. With 1710, you can now have an IPv6 underlay and build IPv6 overlays, IPv4 overlays, or dual stack with a combination of IPv4 and IPv6. With dual stack customers, they will now have an option to seamlessly migrate from an IPv4 stack to a complete IPv6 stack. We'll now move into our new programmability features. First, with a transition from Yang 1.0 to Yang 1.1. There is no difference for customers that are working with Yang. 
The only exception is if the desired application previously passed the netconf hello message to retrieve the supported Yang models. Now, the passing must be modified to reflect how version 1.1 advertises via the IEFT Yang library to retrieve the supported Yang models. Previously, DNS was supported to find zero tag provisioning files. With this get shell DNS enhancements in 1710, DNS servers are now available for use within the get shell, which allows using cloud-based services like HashiCorp Vault easier. Finally, starting with 1710, IP version 6 for GNMI is now supported, along with the IP version 4 support. You can access the release notes and the release blog for more information regarding all the features that we have discussed. Thank you.